Hello and welcome to the Circuit Python Weekly for November 5th, 2018. I'm Scott and I work on Circuit Python for Adafruit. Circuit Python is a beginner friendly embedded version of Python, which means you can use it on small, inexpensive computers uh, to do sensors and all sorts of other fun things. Uh, we have this meeting every week where we invite everyone who is involved in Circuit Python to get together and talk about what we're working on, what we like, what's going on in the community, and uh, generally get on the same page. Uh, this meeting happens at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, in our Discord channel, which is a chat uh, program that we use. Uh, if you want to join, you can do uh, go to the URL adafru.it slash discord. That will get you under our Discord, and we are in the text chat um all week so you you'll be able to hear us or, or chat with us then uh we're in the voice chat on mondays for the meeting so uh check that out um the meeting is in four parts we start with a state of circuit python which is kind of a high level overview and a statistics view of the health of the project uh, we follow that up with hug reports which is a chance for everyone to say thank you to other folks for the works the work that they've been doing uh after hug reports we have uh, status updates, which is you know a, a minute or two about what you've been working on and a minute or two about what you plan on working on in the future. Uh, it's a really good way to share tips and tricks about particular topics. And then uh, after that, we'll have our, our in the weeds section, which is anything that came up when in our earlier discussions, and uh, we have a chance to to talk longer form about that. Uh, the way that we organize it in the weeds, because it kind of like depends week to week what we actually talk about, is that uh, in the Circuit Python text channel, just uh, say, "Hey, for in the weeds, I want to talk about X or Y," and uh, we'll put that in the notes, and then we'll circle back to that at the end when we hit the in the weeds section. Um, this meeting is recorded, so be aware that if you're in the voice channel, your voice is being recorded on my end. Um, and it will be posted to YouTube, and I've been posting to Diode Zone as well, which is an electrical engineering focused peer tube instance, which is neat. Um, so the video recording, uh, including the audio, goes up there, and then we also post a link to notes, which go into a GitHub repository. And those notes have time codes, so if you are reviewing this meeting after the fact, you don't have to listen to the whole thing. You could skim what we talked about and then jump to the spots where we talked about those stuff if that's what you're interested in um and with that i will take a time code and and roll right into the state of circuit python so uh i can't take time codes and speak at the same time um overall uh for the state of circuit python this this these metrics include both the circuit Py circuit python core and the libraries um and i pulled these numbers last night so uh if anything happened between last night and then, uh, they've changed. But uh, we had 35 pull requests merged uh, across everything with 12 different authors. And new names on that list that I haven't seen before are Retalk. Um, and so thank you to Retalk for uh, being a new author there. Uh, we had seven reviewers, which is awesome. And uh, usually this, this number is less. So uh, thank you to Sedacious, who I think is new to this list as well. Um, and then overall, we had nine closed issues by four people and seven opened by three. So uh, a net uh, reduction in the number of issues, which is really good. Um, overall, uh, we've had some strong 4x work happening. Uh, I said this last week as well, um, really hitting at the core of what 4x will be. Uh, Dan's doing Bluetooth and I'm doing some USB stuff. It's really exciting. And then uh, Dan also did uh, a release on 3X, which is a really good iteration, making 3X even better. And uh, Katney, Katney's side for libraries has been going really well as well. So um, thanks to everybody. It's just, in general, it's going really well, which is which is awesome. Um, so that's kind of an, an overview. Um, OK, Sedacious, I'll read your stuff, um, although you can't hear me. <laughs> Um, so from the core, uh, core perspective, this is a, a summary that I do, uh, just regarding the actual circuit Python code base, uh, C code base itself. Uh, we had 10 pull, pull requests merged, 
um, from five different authors, including AT Makers, Bill, Sedacious, and Retalk, uh, Jeff Hepler, and Dan. Uh, so thank you to you five. And then three reviews, uh, Dan, my, for three reviewers, uh, Dan, myself, and Lady Ada, which is awesome. Um, and we have five open pull requests, which is uh, lower than we were for a while, which is awesome. Um, although I think some of those are pretty stale, so we still should take a look at those. Um, and then we had six closed issues by two people and five opened by two people. So uh, we're actually down one, which is great because last week we were <laughs> we were up a number and uh, we kind of ruined the stat for everybody. Even though the library folks did a great job reducing it, we still, still gained a lot. Um, so download-wise, uh, these numbers, again, were taken last night, so they'll be a little bit stale. Uh, to scoop Dan a little bit, he released 311 uh, and... Since the release of 311, which I'm not sure when it happened, but uh, we've had 420 downloads. So it's uh, very apparent to me that our stable releases do get a lot more downloads, which I guess is how it should be. Um, because our our unstable current uh, unstable release is 40 Alpha 2, which has been out a number of weeks, and we only have 298 total downloads. Um, so as we get further into our 40 cycle, we want to see that number increase so that more people are testing it testing the new code. Um, but for now, it's all good. Um, and if you want more details uh, about these download stats per board or by language for Forex, uh, see the notes. Uh, it's all included in the notes, and I won't read, off, read it off here. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it over to Katni to talk about libraries. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. So for libraries, we had 25 pull requests merged, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> We had nine authors, uh, Jerry, Summersoft, Sedacious, Dan, uh, K-Town, Carter, Brennan, myself, and Process 1183. And we had seven reviewers, which is huge. That's also fantastic. Um, myself, uh, Sedacious, Carter, Scott, Dan, Brennan, and Lady Ada. And I want to say thank you to uh, Sedacious. That was um, his first uh, merge and review. Um, he was added to the CircuitPython librarians um, and helped me out this weekend. So that was great. Um, we have 12 open pull requests right now. A number of these are definitely stale. Um, at least two of them I'm going to be closing. Uh, they were um, they're PRs that were opened a long time ago and nothing's been done with them. So uh, we'll be closing those um, at least for now. Um, but there's a few that are that are in there that need um, testing. Uh, I will be picking up hardware for some of them so that we can get that going. But if you have any of this hardware and you have any time, uh, please feel free to uh, test some of these PRs or even just go take a look. Um, any kind of review helps. Um, you may know the code better than you you know know testing hardware, and you may have information that would help. Um, so for issues, we had three closed by three people and two open by two people. Um, so we're down one, um, which is good. And we have 64 open issues. Um, again, uh, all that's in the notes. So if you have um, any time and want to look into any of those, feel free. Um, I will be updating the CircuitPython library uh, tracking issue. Um, so there's always stuff there. I noticed I've had um, a couple people who have been going through and fixing up some of those issues. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and they're referencing that tracking issue. So at least it's getting um, some visibility, uh, which is good. Um, it'll be a little more in depth than the notes because the notes um, don't print out uh, super long lists of, of problems and the library tracking issue does. So uh, I will link that in the notes. And if there's um, anybody who's interested in getting started with CircuitPython, getting started with contributing, um, that sort of thing, uh, it's a really great place to start because there's always some kind of basic thing, some kind of um, real beginner-friendly issues are, are available in this, in, in this library list. Um, so if you want to get started with it, uh, let us know, and we will help you with that. Um, and that's what I have for libraries. Nice. Thank you, Katni. Um, all right. And with that, well, that is uh, the state of CircuitPython as it is this week. Um, next up, we have Hug Reports, which is a chance for everybody to say thank you to folks and other other folks for the work that they've been doing. 
it's something we inherited from Adafruit HQ. Uh, they came up with it in, as opposed to bug reports. So we, we have hug reports to counter the negativity of bug reports that sometimes occurs. Um, and I think it's good for two reasons. Th saying thank, is, thank you is always good, but also it's good to talk about what we value as a community. And I think thanking people for things we value is a great way to do that. Um, so I'll take a time code and uh, I will start us off. Um, first and foremost, I wanna say thank you to Katni Carter and Dan for persisting on this issue, this perpetual issue that we've had with um, people running out of memory because they're pulling libraries off the flash system when they're in Frozen as well. Uh, in practice, we use Frozen to uh, save memory and so that, that doesn't work like people expect. And so uh, that's what 3.1.1 actually changed. So thank you, you three, for persisting and, and getting that uh, fixed for folks. Um, second, I wanted to say uh, thank you to uh, TAC for tiny USB. I've been digging into USB, as some of you may know, that I've been heads down for USB for, I think, two weeks now. Um, and I've used uh, two versions of the USB for the, from Atmel, and I have been enjoying tiny usb much more uh, it's organized way better than uh, the atmel stuff set was so uh, happy to see that and uh, happy to be switching circuit python to, to using tiny usb so uh, thanks to tack for that and then uh, lastly uh, thank you to sedacious i received a package in the mail from sedacious with a cp 32 m4 which is a esp 32 shaped sandy 51 module which is really neat, and I want to put it on my Odroid Go, which is a handheld gaming device at some point soon here. Um, so I'm happy to have received that and, and appreciate all that work. I also merged in the PR for it, so, uh, so that is also awesome. So if anybody ever has board designs that you do and you want to have CircuitPython support it, please uh, let us know and let's get those merged in as board, de board definitions. Um, we want to support as much hardware as we can with CircuitPython. Um, Okay, that's it for me, and uh, we'll circle around. Um, I didn't say it before, but uh, for those of you who are new, I don't think anybody is in here is actually new, but if you're listening along, the way we do this section and the next section is, a, is as a round robin, where I will start to give an example, and then we'll go through the list of the people in the voice chat um, and any other people who weren't able to make it. Uh, we'll do those, those folks in order as well. So uh, with that, let's go to Brennan. Uh, one quick hug report to Cadney for noticing that we didn't have uh, PyPI install instructions on a lot of the libraries that we do have on PyPI and kind of dealing with all those readme files. Nice. All right. Thanks, Brennan. Uh, Carter. Mic check real quick. Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. Cool. Um, one for Dan or several for Dan for ongoing Windows anomaly help. And... <laughs> Some quick advice he gave me uh, for a question I had on uh, potential precision issues with doing some high exponents in math. And uh, for actually implementing the sys syspath change for what you were talking about with the frozen modules. So mm -hmm. we'll see if that helps in the when people actually start using this moving forward. That's good to get in there. Um, let's see, another one for Sedacious. For giving me a heads up on a issue I was mentioned on and totally didn't even see. <laughs> he asked if you know, I was actually going to do it. I was like, hey, I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for pointing out something that I was letting fall through the cracks. Uh, one for Katni for setting up a, uh, a repo for me for something I was PRing in for getting that just kind of the blank put in place and getting it turned on on Travis. Mm -hmm. And then I have one to Lady Ada for che checking out the hardware for that related PR, that repo. And then uh, one to you, Scott, for looks like you did a lot of reviewing this weekend. This morning I was looking through and you had touched a lot of things that I had sitting in the queues and had provided feedback on them. Yeah. So thanks for that. Yesterday I went through my email. My GitHub, I have a filter that filters all the GitHub emails off. And I had been six days behind, which is a lot more than I usually try to. But I've been into USB land, so that's why. So I caught up on that, which is good. Yeah, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, uh, C. Grover says, oh, wait, let me take a time code. Um, C. Grover is text only, so I'll read it off. Um, again, people have an option. If you if you don't have a mic, I, I'm happy to read them off. 
Uh, says group hug to the Circuit Python team and community. Fun to watch progress on MIDI, USB, and audio mixer multi-track! Exclamation uh, point. Looking forward to updated support for displays. Amazing group effort with excellent leadership. Thank you, C Grover, for uh, always making it to the meeting, which is great. Um, okay, Charles is lurking and Dakota is lurking as well, so we're at Dan. Hi. So, um, Hug reports the Catney for three different things, as you mentioned, the frozen library, like saying, like, let's get this done, the frozen library problem. Yeah. Because it's just ongoing support. And then on Saturday night, uh, Katni found that the trellis dot star pin mapping was wrong. So I fixed that and hmm. she was able to make, uh, it was, she was making pictures and noticed for a guide and noticed that it was wrong. Hmm. And then uh, also to Carter for both the frozen library thing and also for um, working with me and working with the customers on a bunch of library, a bunch of obscure problems in, um, in in the in the forum in forum land and then to you scott for continuing to work on tiny usb i think i said last week for taking the big leap but uh you're still flying through the air on that so <laughs> <It's> still... <laughs> that's a good way to put it hopefully i land safely yeah, that's right <laughs> okay that's it all right thanks dan uh jerry's on a plane so he's lurking and so we'll go to catney so first and foremost, hug report to Sedacious for joining the CircuitPython librarians team. Yeah. Um, and then immediately doing uh, his first review and merge and release. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, to, to Brennan for continued support and testing on the Raspberry Python front. Um, to Dan for fixing the pin assignments on the dot star um, issue on the Trellis M4. That was incredibly frustrating. <laughs> Um, another one too, Sedacious, for slogging with me through some code that I fought with this weekend. Um, and Summersoft for helping me with random code issues as well. Nice. All right. Uh, thank you, Katni. Let's go to Nis. Uh, doesn't have a mic, so it says... Um, impossible to put into words, but just a general appreciation of the boldness and uniqueness and new 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 newness of what i call internal to myself the adafruit culture uh pt is often it is often in my thoughts for what he brings to the public face of adafruit industries sweet that's a good that's a good hug report uh thank you Ness. um sedacious is lurking as well but um has put some stuff in the doc so i will read that off um, after I take another time code. Um, Sedacia says, uh, hug report to Katni for keeping me company while I was chained to the desk voluntarily all weekend and making a dope Trellis M4 demo that gave me a head start on a project. Which is great. All right, Jerry, safe travels. Um, and Summersoft is last but not least. That's just plain great. <laughs> uh, Summersoft says, uh, hug report to uh, Tanute and Katni for the merges. Uh, hug report to Dan, Jerry, and those whose names escape me for support in Discord this week. And a grip group hug uh, squared. So thank you, Summersoft. And okay, I don't think we missed anybody. We got everybody. So that is hug reports. Uh, thank you, everybody, for that. Always good to take a moment to think about the awesome things that have happened. Um, and let's move on to status updates. Status updates are a software engineering sort of thing where uh, you just basically get together and chat briefly with other folks about what they're working on. Um, this is great for making sure that people aren't working on the same thing, or if somebody's working on something you've worked on in the past, giving you a chance to um, give them tips and tricks about what they're working on. So um, I will start. I don't think my notes are good. I don't think I did notes. Oh, yeah. 
Um, okay, so for myself, uh, I alluded to it already, but I've been in the the well, as Dan put it, I took a leap of faith switching Circuit Python over to Tiny USB, um, which is a there's like a low level uh, like read and write endpoint stuff of usb and then on top of that there's all this mechanics that is the same usually across everything for like mass storage or cdc serial or midi and uh i was doing midi and i was like oh i want to just switch us all over to this new stuff um so i've been <laughs> i took the leap of faith to do that and i've actually kind of turned the corner where i'm no longer finding new work to do i'm kind of um polishing up work and finishing it up and tidying it up and testing and uh for example i built all of the adafruit or the atmel sam d boards this weekend or on friday to make sure they all built uh i was a little worried that i'd fill up on flash but that is not the case so um my goal this week is to get all of the the requisite prs out so that we do that switch um, and so everybody here sh and who is listening should think about, um, testing what will become alpha three, probably, unless we do an alpha before then, um, it, we will want to hammer on it because it is a new USB stack and it may work a little bit differently. I think, uh, from my experience, at least the serial is working better than the Atmel one. It's, it feels quicker to me, uh, which might just be an illusion. Uh, but the idea is that that we can improve the USB stuff for NRF and for Atmel without having two copies of the same thing. Um, so that'll be really good. And, uh, and then after I get like everything switched over, I'll add MIDI, which shouldn't be too hard. Um, and then I'll be done with that grand adventure into USB MIDI land. Um, the other thing that I wanted to just uh, kind of call out folks for is that I'm going to be gone a couple weeks in December and then a week, week and a half in uh, March because I'm getting married and then have a wedding reception in March. And so uh, I've been re I've been thinking about the things that I only really do. Uh, Katni has run one of these meetings, um, but I want to get to the point where we have multiple people who can do uh, this meeting, the recording for this meeting, um, and basically everything that I do around the meeting, uh, so that I don't always have to be here. So if you're interested in, in, and in helping out running this meeting and taking notes and doing all that, um, let me know. And, uh, well, I want to start doing more of a kind of a, a regular rotation where even if I'm around, maybe I won't be the person running the meeting. Um, I'll just be another person in the round robin. So, uh, if that's interesting to you, please let me know. Um, and that means that, like, I, I was doing this presentation, sorry, I know I'm going long, but I was doing, uh, this, I was applying to do its, uh, talk at Pi Cascades, and I was talking about healthy open source projects and the mentalities that you have to go, have to go into them, and I put a bullet point of, like, you should not be the one that don't, that is the only person that does something. Like, just as a rule of thumb, like, nobody in a project should be the only person that does something. And uh, this is one of those cases where I need to get it to be more people than just me. So I'm working on it. And so if you're interested in that, let me know. Okay, uh, that's that's it for me. I know I rambled a bit, but um, let's go on to Brennan. Yes, so um, last week, some testing of a couple of libraries on the Pi, uh, character LCD stuff, matrix keypad stuff. Um, and also, we have an older um, Python library for the DHT sensors um, there. This week, hoping to maybe work on getting the CircuitPython library for that to work on the Pi 1 and 2 so that we can actually mm. uh, fully deprecate the old library. Mm -hmm. And also, just cleaning up some of the character LCD tutorial stuff still. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, Brennan. Uh, Carter. Yeah, I got a couple of uh, new PRs in. One was for the, the BMP3XXX, so the new pressure sensor that was in the shop from about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, I did a few, I did 
I think you had a couple little tweaks I needed to do. I pushed those up this morning. So that one hopefully is done and can okay. be merged. And similarly for the CAP uh, 1188, the little uh, capacitive touch sensor breakout, I added the ability to set thresholds and sensitivity mm -hmm. to that. So basically just more knobs, uh, features to the libraries they're in. And that's another one where there was a, you had a few little feedbacks on that I pushed <laughs> up this morning. Okay. So that one should be done and done. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to play in core circuit Python and add properties to wave file and the audio IO library. That's that heads up that Sedacious gave me. It was something Lady Ada pinged me on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, um, okay, I'll try. <laughs> and it turned out to, like you said, it's got in the thread. It, it was actually a really good, uh, beginner one because there wasn't too much to do code wise it was just a matter of kind of copy pasting what was there from from another one you could dig into and see how it was all done infrastructure wise right so that was that was kind of fun to do as a as a first to see what's kind of going on under the hood and that's it yeah great job with that i as you were saying that i was like oh i should have hug reported for that that was it's a milestone to to have a pr to the core c code so congrats on that yeah no problem that was fun awesome all right, uh, C. Grover is no mic today, so once they type in, I will read it off. And as after I take out time code as well. C. Grover says, uh, distracted from CircuitPython work, uh, writing some basic analog electronics articles. Uh, did have time to throw together a CV gesture controller using CircuitPython, a feather, and a time of light sensor. Had the prototype up and working in about 10 minutes, which is amazing. Uh, simultaneous MIDI output is next. Uh, CV is the term for Euro Rack Musical con Synthesizer Control Voltage, which is a universal way to control note, pitch, filter characteristics, and just about everything else in the analog synth domain. Uh, for this week, I'll be focusing on finishing the authoring tasks and the mechanical assembly of the UFO model for a local film group. I'm sure there will be a few more tweaks to the UFO's CircuitPython code, but we'll be able to do that with my tablet in the video studio. That should be cool. Okay, thanks, C. Grover. Uh, Charles and Dakota are lurking, although Dakota is typing, so maybe saying may want me to read something off. Um, until then, let's let's go to Dan. Hi, I was just typing. Um... <laughs> yeah. So uh, I released 3.1.1 on Friday night, Friday, or just Friday, I guess, which includes the swap of Frozen and Libs. And um, I'll probably have another release uh, today or tomorrow that has um, Serial Bytes available, which um, an AT Maker's Bill could really use for uh, projects he's writing a learn guide for. Mm -hmm. and it's good to have that earlier rather than later mid waiting for um, four O rather than waiting for four O. And then I've spent a bunch of time on non circuit Python stuff, just stuff about bootloaders and drivers <laughs> also. Yeah. But I have to get, I, I tend to start the NRF uh, wheel turning again. I've been waiting for some feedback and I'll, but I'll start working on that again, regardless of what, else is going on mm -hmm. with my potential feedback providers yeah 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 okay awesome i'm excited to see the nrf stuff and i appreciate the the serial byte stuff as well yeah good um i, I guess that's a question I'll, I'll bring up something in it may be in the weeds about if there's anything else that should be go into three i'll ask it okay end. okay okay thanks all right uh i'll just throw this in here dave dave estelle's uh just dropped a note about a quick update from him. Uh, it says, I'm currently working on a guide. Oh, sorry. I was like, oh, time code. Um, Dave says, I'm currently working on a guide for extending CircuitPython by writing modules in C. And also, I'll be speaking about CircuitPython at PyCon Canada next weekend. So uh, reach out to Dave if you're going to be there. Uh, say hi. Um, Jerry dropped out because his plane is landing. <laughs> And so we'll go to Katni. All right. So a bunch of stuff. Um, last week, I went through all the PRs that needed attention and tried to get them moving. Um, I want to 
discuss, I guess, probably in the weeds, um, if there's a better way to get people involved mm -hmm. um, in reviewing than our current setup. Um, I fixed some issues that were on the lib tracking list, like read the docs, Travis, um, GitHub token problems. Um, I got the character LCD and matrix keypad guides in for review. I think those have been published. I deprecated a Raspberry Pi uh, character LCD guide that was way out of date. Um, merged Brennan's fix for the character LCD simple test. Thank you for that. We re-enabled the 2x bundle until we have um, updated instructions saying we're deprecating 2x, mm -hmm. uh, which is the next thing I did, which is added a warning to every single one of the guides saying you need to update, you need to download the new library bundle, hmm. you need to be running you know, at least 3x, etc. So now there's big red boxes everywhere telling everyone this mm -hmm. thing, so we should be able to disable the 2x bundle again in a few weeks. Nice. I added acceleration to the Trellis M4 lib once I actually got um, the current rev with Excel with an accelerometer on it. Mm -hmm. um, added an example for that. Uh, I have a PR in right now for um, to fix the coordinates on uh, the zero and 180 rotations. Mm -hmm. um, so this week, uh, the first thing I need to do is get the Blue Fruit Spy lib um, released and packaged and double checked and make sure that's all set to go. Then I'm going to do it for the BMP 3XX uh, once that's merged. Um, there is a Trellis M4 uh, guide that the CircuitPython stuff for it is in. Um, however, we wanted a page on actually using the library, um, mostly because nobody can agree on what 00, zero is. So we <laughs> wanted to have a very clear explanation so there's actually pictures um it'll be great uh so i need to finish that up mm -hmm. um update the circuit python lib tracking issue that i linked earlier um there's a list of python libraries uh on github that are ready to be deprecated um that's something that uh, i will be working on in the near future mm. and once all of that is done it's back to the um, pi pi land guide updates awesome think that's it <laughs> i bet you're doing more than that even though that's a long list probably but you know that's that's what i wrote down <laughs> right like like earlier in the week so that's the only reason that i remember that's what i that that's what i did so it's good to yeah, keep the, track sure of there's more. good to keep track of um, like the coordinate thing was exhausted like in the end i actually tested every single button and every single neopixel coordinate to make sure because i thought i had done that previously and obviously mm -hmm. i didn't so yeah that was a lot of testing Yep, that's Adafruit quality for you, <laughs> doing that sort of testing. Well, good job. Thanks. All right, uh, Nis, you want to type stuff in? I think I got a mic now. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. It should be nice and quiet. Um, I got a new bare metal port for the Trellis M4 going. Mm -hmm. um, it's a crystalless board, uh, so I had to mess around with the uh, oscillator. This is the first time I've worked without a crystal oscillator in uh, Atmel start. Hmm. Um, and I've got uh, USB bi-directional connectivity. I'm able to uh, both read keystrokes and um, and report things back to the, the human. So uh, I'm pretty, uh, and of course I've already played with the uh, Arduino <clears throat> stuff. To, it, it tried that drum machine that uh, Lamar had uploaded. So it's, Trellis is nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's neat. I got my second. I got a production one that I'm excited about. Uh, it um in it for anybody listening. Uh, if you listen in the headphones, there's a very clear stereo separation on one of the voices on that drum kit, so you can hear it. Left and right aren't quite in synchronization, so you can definitely tell that uh, you indeed do not have just monaural. It's definitely stereo. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's du it for me. Dual DAX. Awesome, thanks, Nis. Thank you. All right, and Sedacious is uh, half lurking as well, so I'll read that after I take a Tom code. Sedacious says, um, "Long list of things, just like Katni, getting lots done. Uh, last week, worked all weekend on the Blinky version of the wife's raccoon toy. Uh, got the Blinky bits assembled and cast into the, into the toy after a month of prep." Um, turns out positioning LED, LEDs in 3D space by bending the 18 gauge wire they're attached to is hard to do with under four millimeter accuracy without lifting pads. 
That sounds tough for sure. I uh, got the mini TFT properly oriented and animated by reading frames direct from Flash. I threw together a script that uses the Trellis M4 to run the raccoon and allow for nudging the colors and timing. Neat. I feel like we should have some pictures here, Sedacious. Um, started learning Fusion and started working on 3D model of the board to make a case. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sedacious says, I am only one man in terms of pictures. Uh, we're excited to see it for sure. Uh, no pressure though. And then uh, lastly, uh, <laughs> made a Gantt chart and terrified myself. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I believe a Gantt chart is a way of charting all the work that you have to do and anticipating when it's going to be done. So uh, yeah, I guess I, I touched on a nerve there. Uh, <laughs> it'll come up in a, just a sec too. Uh, Sedacious says, this week, uh, bring up Rev 2 of the board today and pray to Blinka there is no Rev 3 needed before next Wednesday. <laughs> We're p praying to Blinka now. Uh, finish modeling the case and stand and print it or give up and make it out of wood and then mold it. Uh, final coating and art for LEDs and TFT. Finish assembly of prototype and then make two more. And the last bullet says, I'm so tired. Definitely not burning out in all caps. Uh, Sedacious, do you have a deadline? Is, is there a deadline for this uh, blinky raccoon toy? Sedacious is typing. There must be a deadline. Ah, there's a con next one that they're leaving for next Wednesday morning. <laughs> and Summersaw says, the corporate overlords are proud of your ascendance, Sedacious. Hashtag Gantt chart it. All right, well, that, good luck, Sedacious, and uh, if you have any code issues, you know we're here to help you through those. Um, we have Summersoft, uh, and I'll read Summersoft's off after taking a time code. Summersoft says, uh, for the FRAM library, uh, I2C uh, is merged. We'll update the SPI branch with changes and put it in the PR later today. Uh, for Adabot, uh, Library needs release validator. Release validator has been merged along with an upgrade to the request module to mi mitigate a CVE. Uh, run slash cron and Travis is mostly working, still tweaking the YAML. Um, this week, uh, Adabot wise, working on library download stats. Uh, Summersoft had a great idea to split it into a separate file, which is, is really good. Um, for Adabot, get the Travis run into a PR. PRable state, and then uh, better and further implement request.get timeout equals n, which document inc documentation encourages to use in production environments. Um, awesome. And so that we just went through the round robin, but we just had AT Makers Bill join us. So, uh, Bill, do you want to do hug reports and status updates? I don't know if he's lurking or not. I see you unmuted, but I cannot hear you. All right, Bill, we'll come back to you. Um, so we're going to move on to in the weeds, and then when Bill gets his mic going, we'll, we'll go back to him. Um, okay, so... 38, 39. We're cruising today, which is good. Um, in the weed section is a is a chance for uh, us to talk about any longer form topics that have come up either earlier or just in general topics that people want to talk about. We've had two come up so far um, that we'll cover, and then we'll we'll cover Bill uh, when he's ready as well. Uh, so if you have any other any other things you do want to talk about in the weeds, um, please just type them into the CircuitPython text channel and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pull them off there, put them in the notes, and, and then get to them. So um, first and foremost, uh, Dan, you want to talk about uh, 3x release? Yeah, um, so I, I was going to put in, I was going to make a 3.1.2 release. Um, which has serial bytes available. 
um, for AT Makers Bill for a project. And I just want to know if there's anything else that's easy that people know of that's in master, but they'd like to see in three. Mm. I can't, I think we've mostly we've, we've added a few things to, you know, not, not anything major, but are there, are there some other minor things that would be very easy to backport? Uh, this is kind of a question. Maybe I'll ask Jerry again after he picks up his luggage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything. I, I really, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what's up with my other mic here, but um, I really appreciate the fact that we can get that into 3X. That was really one of the reasons for doing it was to get it out without having to wait for four. And I think I just uh, wasn't clear enough about that when I chose where to branch from. So mm -hmm. thank you for uh, taking the back port. And I, I hope it's, uh, it's my first attempt at doing a back port and I hope it worked out okay. Um, I went old school and did good old fashioned patch and it seemed to work well. Totally. Um, but um so yeah so thank you for doing that i i do appreciate the fact that we're um uh, i've got a guy that's about oh i don't know 60 or 70 percent done uh and if if we we're gonna wait several months it would it would kind of make it pointless so um thank you for doing that i i don't know anything else that, that people are are uh, looking to, to see in three uh, but um uh, mm -hmm. yeah that's do you want do. Bill? Do you want to talk any other hug reports or status updates? Yeah, while I mean, the only other thing I can I can uh, tell you, I think I said this last night pretty well, is this is like one of the most helpful places out there. <laughs> so the group in general, uh, there are a lot of places, especially right now in tech and maker world, that just aren't always uh, friendly and helpful and and welcoming. So I just wanted to, and I said this when I posted it, that was in, a little bit in response to it. <laughs> A different part of my world not being mm -hmm. so friendly but um it, it definitely is important for me to, to make sure you guys know that uh it is the, the part of uh even just the part of the adafruit stuff too where if i post something in this group i'm going to get a great answer even if the answer is no it's going to be well done so thank you all uh, i don't everything specific other than um you know dan and, and uh uh and scott being willing to work with me on this 3.0 backport so mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, thinking, you did most of the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just well, playing. yes and no. So, so, I mean, Katni sent me the guide that showed the the, the parts that um, I needed as far as, listen, I'm not a Git expert, right? I've not been yet. Using version control since RCS, but Git's a different beast. And It is, yeah. People did kind of help me navigate that mess. Um, and I think I can do that now. I mean, I, th I think I can backport now given that I, I kind of know the path much better now. So okay. um, yeah, it's all good. I will tell you, I have a, um, I still have a, a small issue. Uh, I don't have anybody who can test this for me on a Mac. So if anybody wants to help me send, um, you send serial commands from the command line, uh, send them to a TTY on a Mac and test it for me. I would love the help. I don't, I don't have a Mac to do it on. How about you? How about file, just file an issue on this main circuit Python repo and, and just use that as a, here's what to do on Mac. And then either I or somebody else can pick it up and just try it. Perfect. All right. I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. When in doubt, if you have things you want to do, just like throw them as issues. And the main thing for me with issues is it just has to be clear what needs to be done. And as long as we have that, then it's fine to have it so that we can do it and close it. Cool. All right. That works. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Dan, did you have more to add? Uh, I was, I was just wondering. We have a lot of stuff going on in four, and we are waiting for the BLE stuff. Mm -hmm. And we could wait for Big Bang, where we have both the Atmel stuff and the NRF stuff ready to go. We could also think about if we think that that the Atmel side of 4.0 is stable at some point. We could think about deferring. Mm -hmm. You know, we could say, well, we're going to release a 4.0 that we can ship on Atmel's and 4.1 will be yeah, the completion of the NRF support or something like that. Right. Well, I think we don't have to be tied to have these separate things. Right. Necessarily. So, I, mean, I don't know if you, what you feel about that, but yeah. 
So just one thought from our standpoint, um, and this comes back to something Dan said today. Uh, he, he had mentioned that K-Town was working on uh, a port using the AT commands mm -hmm. of a library. Uh, if that exists on 3X, um, the AT is the thing that AT is waiting on most for from CircuitPython is BLE support, right? Right. And, uh, so that would make it much easier for us to, because um, we could get an M0 with an NRF41 on it, mm -hmm. right? Or BLE, whatever it's called. Yep. Um, and we would have a solution in CircuitPython. They can send keystrokes and mouse movements, mm -hmm. uh, which is mostly what we're going to use BLE for. Mm -hmm. um, if if we don't have that, I think we are we will be chomping at the bit for 4.0, right? Right. Well, what what this what they're working with the library? So I gave you a pointer to the to the li to the draft library. Um, the idea is on the NRF 52A32 on the M0 blue fruit board, okay, yeah, which it's... doesn't have a, you can, it doesn't have a very big file system because it's not an express board, mm -hmm. right, but right. Uh, K-Town and um, Lady A have been testing sending AT commands to the Bluetooth, the BLE module on that board, and that's what that does. So that's a, that's a one board solution. Right. Well, it, it also would work with the NRF 51 breakouts, right? So right, it would also right. work on things right. like the, the Metro. Um, mm -hmm. right? That's actually true. Yeah. Any board that can talk to a serial port, it would work, right? Exactly. And exactly. I think, and I think that yeah. means that it'll work on 3X, even if we don't change anything in 3X. Like you yeah, won't, so you they, won't go get the workflow stuff we want to do, but you don't need that. Right, and, and and really, we're not trying to do high speed um, Bluetooth communication or audio over Bluetooth or any anything else. Right, we're just trying to do HID over BLE. So, from my standpoint, that's just fine. Right, I don't really. I mean, I'd love it if the if the library eventually had the same interface when it became an NRF fifty two library, but if it right. doesn't, it, right, that's yeah. So I just posted a link to the library that they just started working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah. So, so that that uh, I guess it's SPI. It's not UART, but it, it doesn't really matter, right? It right. doesn't really matter. Yeah, it would be easy to adapt this to the UART one. Right. So, um, and they're trying to also if they can do it on the on the single board solution. And I think that this is they're testing, they had to put some delays in a few places. And so I think this is also kind of ironing out some possible bugs in the module code. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah that, that's great. I mean, what, what I have a, I actually have a, what I'm going to be in Boston with you, um, Dan, or hopefully mm -hmm. with you. Uh, I'm actually putting together a system for a guy who, what he needs is both USB and BLE um, HID. It sounds like alphabet soup here, but that's <laughs> um, that, that's really what he needs. And right now, that means that single board solution is fine if I use Arduino, right? And I'm using the same AT commands that they're using here, so it's the same interface. Right. Mm -hmm. um, just I'd much rather be doing that through uh, through Python. Right. So feel free to test the, this, this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, and and then and give them feedback because yep. they just finished this like today or something mm -hmm. unfinished that I mean it's sort of like first first published. Right. So. I probably want to pick up a breakout board as well so I can use it with like the you know the teens uh, the the uh, itsy bitsies and stuff that I have. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I would just say like expect the APIs to evolve. Right. Just cuz it's all new, but our goal is like I was talking about this earlier in our internal meeting of like I want to make it so that you can swap your BLE code across the two just fine. I also want to make it so that like your USB head code is identical to your BLE head code too. Um, yeah, no, that would be ideal, right? The ability to just set a flag that says go out the USB port or go out the BLE yep. or right, go out a, an extra, a third UART or whatever it is you want to do. Right. Right. Yep. That's the dream. Yeah. Sounds great. I like your dream. Um, okay, so and then Dan had this question about uh, 
it, whether we want to do 4.0 before NRF is completely ready, and I'm totally open to it. My worry is that I, I want to give the USB stuff that I'm doing some soak time, and so uh, it, we may find that the NRF stuff goes quick enough that we can just do it all all at 4.0 if we give the USB enough time to soak. So Right. I, I was sort of originally thought of this before started the math the USB. <laughs> yeah uh, right brain transplant but right. yeah yeah i'm open to it i, I yeah. definitely and and yeah i'm definitely open to it i think with 3x we could have done that a lot sooner like and we're already in this position where we're shipping boards with the alphas on it and so i think we we can totally be more aggressive and just saying like this is what everybody should be using yeah yeah and we won't call it alpha because i got yeah <laughs> yeah that, that, that's just that gives people pause so yeah naming is hard yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean may, maybe what we do is we stop using the the alpha and beta monikers and we just be more aggressive in our major version numbering so like right because that still gives us the ability to break change and break things um which right, is what right. i like to do right like like how often Chrome or Firefox change of version numbers these right. days. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they're like like Firefox is like version sixty four, right? Like right. it's totally fine if we're releasing CircuitPython sixty four. <laughs> uh, although it'd be hard to want to move off that because it sounds so cool. Right. Um all right. Is that is that all That's we want to yeah. talk about for three X? Okay. And then uh yeah. the only other topic we have is from Catney, so I'll take a time code and Katni can talk about that. Okay, so we have some PRs that are in right now that haven't gotten any attention. Um, and I want to know, is the issue just that nobody's got time, which is totally understandable? Um, or is the issue that it's that it's not be, it's not visible that that being part of the circuit Python librarians and getting that request for reviews is not um, on people's radar or something like that. And what I want to know is, is there a, a possibly a better way to get people involved in reviewing um, library PRs? Uh, so people who are reviewers or um, who have any ideas about that, I would really appreciate some input. Um, and, or, and maybe it's just as simple as, you know, posting them to Discord regularly um, instead of having people um, instead, instead of expecting that the notification from GitHub is enough. Cause right. obviously if you're tied into that, there's so much information coming from GitHub. Um, so it's possible that it's just getting lost um, in the, you know, deluge of, mm -hmm. of, of GitHub emails. Um, so I don't know, does anybody have any ideas on that or any thoughts on that in terms of their own experiences as being a reviewer? Is there a, do you think there's a better way to let you know that something needs to be reviewed. Well, I think I think we can experiment with piping more GitHub notifications from libraries into the Discord chat because there's okay. definitely there are definitely times where it is really helpful to see the stuff for the core uh, yeah. coming into the channel. And so I, I think agree. I think the challenge with the libraries is just like there are so many of them, right? Um, one thing we could experiment with is actually having a second channel for it, but um, maybe maybe what we want is we just want like new PRs to go there or something. Yeah. Um, and I, because I think obviously if we're if we're doing all of the issues and all of the pull requests on libraries, we're gonna possibly. Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends because a lot of those issues are already open, and it's not that a lot of a lot of issues aren't getting added. Right. Yeah. So it may not actually blow out the channel. Um, is the challenge here? Is, sorry, Kenny. Is, is, oh, is the challenge here really that um, the thing that needs to be bubbled up are pull requests that are completed and need reviews? Is that the challenge? I think so. I have I have open pull requests right now that need right. to be reviewed, and they haven't gotten any attention. And I want to know whether there's a way that I can make that more available to people. Well, can we can we? Um, I don't know how your your robot works, but is it possible to have something where if Katni puts a call for review on it or flags it somehow that says, I 
I see this pull request. It's been a day. I have nobody looking at it and just make it easy for her to hit a button and it'll make it into the discord. Because otherwise, I do think that like there's there's a lot of libraries. Yeah. Right. You could rapidly drown out everything else and not see the six problem. You'd see the 64 other issues that were right. Right. Um, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, it's that's something that, as SummerSoft is typing, I feel like can probably answer. <laughs> um, well, suppose we just suppose you just posted them. Well, that's that's what I'm. That was another just thing. Paste them in, just like okay. You know, this hasn't gotten any attention. I'll paste it in the channel. She you know? did. <laughs> She's already I done did. that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did do that with these ones. Okay. But the thing is, like, we're discussing it now because maybe people aren't aware of the fact that that was something I was going to do. Right. So that's that, that may not mean that it doesn't work. It may just mean that nobody knew that I was doing that, and so no one's looked into it. So if we figure out a way to tell people that you know we're going to post it to discord as well um yeah. that kind of thing but what about just saying setting a flag on it that says if it's been sitting in a waiting for review state for more than 48 hours post a note right i mean i'm sure they can i'm sure that's doable right yeah and the the thing we have is the circuit python librarians team mm -hmm. which is a which is a group of people who get noted like we can tag them and then all of them get notified that something needs review um but that only flags the people that are in that. It's also, so, that's not how the Discord bot works either. Right. So. Get, it wouldn't the, really be possible to pick out certain things, like certain keywords. Like yeah, it, it I don't think do so. That. Unless we have something intermediary that's like running a query and posting to, to the webhook for Discord. Okay. Um. But I also, I you know, I bet we could just turn it on for everything and it'd be okay. I don't think the libraries get that much traffic. It just looks um, like they do because the library issue list is really long. But that is that issue list has been pretty static. Right, and I, I mean, I'm on all those emails, and so I kind of see like the rate at which the emails come. And Brennan, to respond to that, um, that's kind of like I want people to feel like you can look at it. I don't, it doesn't matter if you think you're not qualified, you can, you can catch typos. You can see like a structural thing might be weird. Um, you've, you've looked at enough and slogged through enough libraries that, you know, like you can take a look at something and go, oh, like maybe that shouldn't be a property or maybe it should be. Right. Um, and so even if all you're doing is reviewing a tiny part of it, that's still helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and on top of that, that also yeah. gets you more experience with reviewing. Can yeah, I, that makes sense. I'm happy. Can I to... throw out a crazy idea? Yep. yep. Um, I know for myself, perfect uh, personally, I know for a fact I don't have enough experience to be looking at some of this stuff, which which wouldn't preclude me from trying, um, but I don't want to create more work than I'm helping. Um, would it be possible to maybe at some point get a group of people together? and walk some of us noobs through the process to say this is how we'd like it to be done this is good practice um this is how we usually do it this is a good idea mm -hmm. um uh so that i like for myself i kind of see oh that's how it works um that would be a bad idea if i did that um to kind of get a better handle on uh how you guys do it right so I actually wrote a guide on Git and GitHub workflow, which includes two sections on, um, which which includes a whole set of sections on receiving a review and giving a review. Yeah, um, some of us learn well from reading things. Um, some of us learn better from being shown or having someone to say, "Yeah, but I don't get that." Right. Um, or, or watching someone else. Everybody learns differently. Yeah. Um, and I think, too, that when you've got something to read, you put it on the, the pile of things to read <laughs> and you never get around to reading it. Whereas I if understand. you know that, that you know, uh, Tuesday night at eight o'clock, you're going to get together with some people for 20 minutes and do something. Right. 
you know, and, and even if all you get done is 20 minutes worth of something, at least you got 20 minutes worth of something done. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and like I say, it, it may be a wild and crazy idea that will never come to nothing, but it, it was, it was just an idea to put out there. That no, it's, I, it's I, not, I know... a, it's not a bad idea. I think it's a good uh, idea. Yeah. And one thing I will say is, um, you might not think that you know enough to do much of anything, but catching typos is a huge deal. <laughs> And that's something that you would still be able to do, like even if you don't understand properties and functions and and registers and well, all of my, that. My my strength is in asking good questions. Like I may right. I may know nothing about building a submarine, but I can ask somebody, um, are you supposed to be welding that on that way? Yeah. I know nothing about welding. I know nothing, but it just looks like it's not like the other things. Oh oh, oh yeah, right. I'm supposed to be using this other thing. And, and that's the thing, too, is like asking questions and reviews is totally fine. And even if it's something that I mean, that that helps you learn and but, it helps us like. But when know. I go to GitHub and flip the wrong switch and accidentally download a copy of everything. <laughs> um, gotcha. Not... OK, yeah, we can consider something like that um, or possibly possibly putting together a video or something, at least to try it like of, of screen sharing to try and walk through the review process. Well, that's something to think about. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I, I think that's a great idea. I think in general, if you're I interested, this was an in the weeds question, huh? I figured this was an in the weeds question. <laughs> it totally. That's exactly what the weeds is for. And I was just thinking, like, we could totally do this after the weeds at one point. Like, yeah, we can pull up the library, the review list that, now, and do it. That was my dream. Um. So yeah. Yeah, like we could totally do that after the weeds here. Um, Cause I have a couple I need to do for Carter. I'm happy to do that. But before we before we get past the weeds, which I don't know is what is past but the weeds. After the weeds, Be beyond but, but the weeds. Not today, I can't. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, that's good to know. I mean, I'm totally happy. But what I want to say more broadly is that if you ever feel like uh, you need. Oh, a helping hand to get into this stuff. Please reach out to me. Please reach out to Dan or Katney. Like one thing that I've been very uh, cognizant of is that like I am always willing to put time into people learning how to do stuff so that I don't need to do it in the future. I can um, attest to that. Which is super <laughs> selfish, <laughs> um, but it's true, right? Like don't worry about taking my time to learn how to review stuff if that once I I teach you how to do it. You do it for me. <laughs> like it's a, it's a community investment for for everyone involved. Yes, and I and and we all recognize that, and that's something that is top of our priority list. Um, so Dakota, for you, just let me know when you want to do it. I'm happy to do it. For anybody else who's listening, if you, you know, regardless of what it is, whether it's doing reviews, whether it's testing from hardware, whether it's working in the sea land, like Carter just started. Um, if there's any of that stuff that's interesting to you, but you feel like you just want to run it over with somebody and have somebody, you know, sanity check the first two or three times that you do it or ask some questions like that is our number one priority. So please reach out to us and we'll find somebody to mentor you for that. Um, well, I, I know I'm definitely benefiting from being a member of the community. I just felt that I wasn't necessarily contributing sufficiently at this point, and I would like to. We all started there. <laughs> I started there not that long ago. <laughs> so, and I thought there might be some others who also felt that, yeah. you know, if, if there was someone to, to share the journey with, maybe they'd want to learn how to do it as well, because it, it would be a great way to learn how to program. Yeah. Yeah, I totally, th I, I totally agree. I was actually, so I think, I think a live code review stream sort of thing is a good idea um, that I'd be happy to do. I was actually thinking with the USB stuff, I was thinking about live streaming, adding support for a new microcontroller, like doing all the low level USB stuff, which is totally super low level, but um, may, maybe it'd be interesting to some people. Well, I, I was, I was dreaming big kind of along the lines of somebody's workshop yeah i mean i'm ha i i'm totally down to i'm totally down to do that sort of stuff um so if there's a if i'm ever like in status updates talking about something and you want to just like if you want me to twitch stream it or something just tell me i'm open to that um i may ignore the chat 
at least like for most of an hour or something just so that I'm not distracted. Um, and if that's the case, like talk to, talk to me. Um, I can yeah. be in the chat and be your, be your proxy. Yep. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, totally open to all of that stuff. Getting more people on board, doing more things is really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say is there was one review that I saw that for something that Car like Carter's pull request where it was like, does anybody have this hardware to test it? And it was crickets. And I think that if Carter has hardware and writes a driver, I'm willing to look it over. And if there's no red flags, just merge it. Right. Like, um, it's important to realize that all of this code is is evolving. So even if, uh, and I, I made a comment to Lady Ada about this this weekend as well, of like, you know, if I drop into a pull request and I put three comments and you're also doing the review and those three comments were addressed, but I haven't got back to say like, yeah, those were addressed like I want, like you, it's totally fine for you to say like, I'm going to merge this because just because code is merged does not mean it's fixed, right? Like we can always mm -mm. update and evolve the code that we have to make it better and easier and all of that. So like and we do and we do, and we will continue to do that. Um, yep. And so it's important to realize that like doing a review is helpful. It's not committing to, under fully understanding everything it's it's doing a best effort review of something and it's not signing I, off on a final quality control check I, 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 yeah i, I kind of understood that much but i'm i'm not a, even at this point comfortable even understanding the difference <laughs> between a, a pull request and a merge so right like i say right. sometimes just knowing the the terminology is helpful so totally uh, you know pro totally. process procedure and protocol is ways to start yep yeah, so uh, very happy to very happy to help with those sorts of questions uh, for and, sure. And for sure. and and I have to say, you know, a, a hug report that the documentation that you guys put out uh, and the structure of your your organization and your site and your community is is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I mean that's that like the talk that I proposed for Pat Cascades. I'm really hopeful that I'm able to do it because it talks about you know, the things that we've deliberately done in the last year in terms of that community and also reasons and, and reasons and thought processes behind really focusing on it. So uh, I really hope I'm able to give that talk. It's not, they're not new ideas because they're like ideas I got from other places, but uh, I, I want to see more, more communities do it. So yeah, well, those are all good ideas. Um, I think we should do them all and, and experiment and, and try them. So um, in terms of scheduling, uh, if anybody ever just wants me to look at a review, just ping me and bug me and, and have me do that. I'm happy to do a secondary review. But um, then again, don't be afraid to always just approve and merge on your own. Um, if anybody wants to watch me live code, let me know. I'm happy to do that. Um, or if you want to just do kind of a class session on reviews uh, where it is more engaging in, in with the chat audience, happy to do that as well. So, uh, yeah, just let me know. Um, definitely open to it. And, you know, our number one priority is getting more people to share the load. So um, <laughs> I don't need your Twitch Prime sub. Adafruit pays me. They they would be Adafruit would be happy to pay me to to do streams like that. So anyway, any other questions on that? Any? Um, else? I don't think so. Um, I guess I don't know that I expected a, a clean answer. <laughs> no, I think it's hard. Yeah, I hoped for one, but that was. I That's think the well what once I know what I'm doing I would more than happy to, to dive into the pile of backlog and weed it out yes okay well then I think we should probably put some priority on doing a live review session mm -hmm. um, which I'm also happy to do um, 
it may be good to have two different perspectives in the sense that Scott has a much lower level perspective than I do. Right. Um, so it might be worth seeing both because Scott can address some much um, deeper issues than I'm really comfortable addressing at the moment. Um, and But there's like higher level stuff that, you know, when, when you're starting out um, might be more attractive in terms of feeling comfortable. I would definitely like to get your input because I have admired your organizational approach to things i must say <laughs> okay so, fair I'm, enough I'm to you as well so so that's my thought is to is to two two different um I mean, we do them at the same like you know yeah currently or, or whatever like one after the other um they don't have to be at different times but um so we should come up with a time for that okay and consider doing that um and then i guess beyond that um i will start posting regularly to discord I think would be something um, and we can look into turning on notifications mm -hmm. in discord um, for the libraries. Um, and see how that goes. So I think, I think those are uh, the things we should put some priority on. So I agree, and I'll, I'll second the vote for the uh, some form of live stream or a classroom kind of a thing to show reviews. Okay. Yes, and thanks That's for bringing this up, Katni, because I've seen this also, and I almost pinged you on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but unfortunately, I don't have an answer either because I think it's we have everything in place we need. It's just a matter of getting more enthusiasm and momentum to actually do the reviews. And I think if we, it sounds like doing this kind of a. Uh, live session to show people code review could overcome people's trepidations of jumping in, then that, that would really help. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think that was an excellent, as much as you said it was a crazy idea, I think it was an excellent idea. Um, and on top of that, we can add that video to the guide. Yeah. And then for people who learn better from video, um, there it will be available in the guide. And people who learn better from reading uh, mm -hmm. have the guide available still. Yeah. And I think uh, when it comes to drivers, like having the hardware can be a, an issue too. So uh, Dakota, for you explicitly or anybody else who wants to dive in but may not have the plethora of devices that uh, Adafruit has, uh, we could actually keep like a running list of who has what, uh, especially for those folks who are just getting started, where if something comes up for a particular thing, we can ping you explicitly as like, hey, this would be a good good first issue for you because you have this hardware already. Um, so I think there could be more of that as well of like the circuit Python library librarians group is great, but it doesn't put, put any one person on the hook uh, or at least doesn't explicitly ask somebody. I have to be careful because I don't want to ever put volunteers on the hook. Like you're more than welcome to say you can't do it. Um, yeah. But 100%. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the same time, it, it's easier to engage people if you're explicitly asking a particular person. So, um, so yeah. So if we ask you and you can't, please just tell us. Yeah. We're not we're not expecting that because you have hardware or whatnot that you will be able to do all the things. Right. It's just an option. Yep. And at. As things evolve, like if you do a number of reviews for us, like we can totally start sending you hardware, uh, both for just stuff you want to play around with and stuff that you could review. So yep. know that, that that is an end end goal as well. Um, I know we're running, uh, we're at almost an hour and 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, too many toys. Uh, but I saw that uh, Deshipu just joined and I know that we just had the time change. So uh, Deshipu, do you have uh, any stuff you want to cover? Uh, we're towards the end of the meeting, so hug reports, status updates, all that sort of stuff is valid. Okay. Uh, Deshipu says no. So uh, thanks for hopping in. Uh, I think I will wrap up unless anybody else has anything final to say. No, I think we're good. Cool. All right. Well, let me take a time code and put it at the bottom of the doc and we'll wrap up. That was a really, really good discussion, and I'm very, very excited for those ideas that we just came up with. So um, let's do it, for sure. Um, 
Okay, so this has been the Adafruit or the Circuit Python Weekly for uh, November fifth, twenty eighteen. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, we just had a really great discussion in the weeds. Um, if you've made it this far, you probably just listened to it. Um, this meeting is open to everybody who or anyone who wants to join. Uh, it's at eleven a.m. Pacific time, two p.m. Eastern. Uh, we just got through the time change, so hopefully, those of those folks who are in different countries and don't adjust time with us can figure that out, which is good. Um, it's on our Discord server, which uh, you can join via the invite link uh, redirect, which is edafru.it slash discord. Um, if you're unable to attend the meeting now or in the future, uh, you can listen to this on our the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit goes up there on a playlist. Uh, the link is put in our Circuit Python or our Python for Microcontrollers uh, weekly newsletter, which you can sign up for at adafruitdaily.com and check Python for Microcontrollers. That goes out Tuesday mornings exactly so that we can put the, the link to this meeting in there. Um, the recordings include uh, links to the notes, which includes time codes, so that you can figure out when we talked about what, and you can skip around if you like. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, until next week, um, happy to chat in the text channel on CircuitPython on, on Discord until then. So until next week, uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone.